Okay. okay guys, so we're here now at the Moss and Arms uh, and we're gonna go check in with the guide and uh, get on one of the, the brewery tours so you guys can see what the Fools Brewery is about. So, Okay guys, and I'm also here with Melde and Christian, which are both guys from my class at the university. So we're gonna go and have the brewery tour and taste some of their beers on cask and it's gonna be fun. So cheers! Hello guys, uh, we're here with uh, Susan uh, from Fuller's and she's gonna talk a little bit about the, the history of the site here. Uh, I'm just saying that there has been a brewery on this site for 400 years, not Fuller Smith and Turner, we're a much newer addition to the scene. Our starting date, the date of our partnership, is 1845. And a little later, I'll show you, we have a very good way of remembering that foundation date. But if we think back 400 years, Chiswick was then the country. Outside London, market gardens and farms. So that's the sort of scenario we're thinking of. And the river, which is just at the bottom of the road there, was of course very important. The river, the river turns. And uh, the raw materials for the brewery then would have come by river. A lot of the product, a lot of the beer went out. Now, of course, the main road has come, and uh, the river doesn't uh, do that, have that function any longer. So let's move on now from the Mawsons. We're going to go past the shop, which you can peek into, and round to the brewery. you sort of begin to think, oh my goodness, this is like a museum, <laughs> an elderly sort of brewery, but actually it's a very modern brewery, we're going to go around a 21st century brewery. Okay, uh, this is the Griffin, we're the Griffin Brewery, the Griffin is a mythical beast, a female, combination of a lion and an eagle, and she is uh, a guardian of treasure. So if you look, her front, front claws are very firmly into our treasure. Yeah, the beer. <laughs> Here they are, John Bird Fuller. He was a gentleman investor, country gentleman. His father had put money in the brewery. When he took over, he realised money was not the only thing that business required. He looked around, was introduced to these two men, Henry Smith and John Turner. John Turner was very important. He was already a chief brewer who was working at a brewery on the east side of London. They were invited west to join the partnership in 1845. Henry Smith and John Turner were brothers-in-law. And the reason that we're so interested in our past is that it, it uh, completely dominates our present and our future. Because our chairman is a Turner, our president is a Fuller, Many members of the family are still on the day-to-day -day management of the company. So we see family control as our, part of our success. And currently we're brewing about 1.4 million pints of beer a week. Okay. And as I said, 15% uh, of production exported to over 50 different countries. Uh, are we for them? Over 50 different countries. 15%. 15%. 15 percent. Okay. Yes. Uh, obviously, we bottle beer, we can beer, okay. but most importantly, we cask. Yeah. We put our beer into casks. 75% of our production is cask ale. Cake beers, of course. Cake beers travel better, last longer. Yeah. When you go into the pub, they're pulled through the pump with the addition of gas. But it's cask ales that make us a heritage yeah. brewery. A okay. car scale is a living product. When we add the yeast, it continues to uh, to change and modify the beer right up until the moment that you drink it. When you drink it in the pub, it's pulled through a hand pump, so no additives. Oh, okay. So the fizz is totally na good. the fizz, or <laughs> as you might say, lack of fizz, <laughs> is totally natural. Like a, a chocolate <laughs> odor. <laughs> Many smells. <laughs> uh, this is just again to underline the fact that Fuller's like the best of the ancient world of brewing and the best of the modern. So you're looking here beside an old mash tun, in use in the brewery for about 100 years, not used anymore. 
been replaced by the two mesh tans. You're looking at the underside of them. That was mesh tan number one, and we're standing in the position of mesh tan number two. If you look at the yeah. circle, oh, yeah. so we're in the middle of mesh tan number two. It gives you an idea of how large it was. Um, how many uh, liters could uh, one of the these mesh tan contain? Um, or gallons? Sure, because I think they usually do it in tons of weight because it's the mash yeah. and the hot liquor, the hot liquor. Okay. But when you go up, it will probably tell us. But, I mean, this seems at, when you're standing, I don't yeah, think I mean, it's just a mess in your nose. Yeah. It's a picture, old picture of the brewery. Of the old brewery yeah. Well, of this brewery that obviously we've modernized various corners and thought about that. Thing. You started here at the pub. Obviously, the river here. Yeah, the, you could see the, that tree and the far back. Yeah. Okay. It's again to show some of the changes. Chief Brewer with his whiskers and his watch chain, the wooden barrels, John Keane, Keen, yeah. the metal barrels, Georgina, who was a lady brewer, very unusual in the UK to have a lady brewer. And when we took over Gail, she worked with the chief brewer there for about five months to make sure that the Gail's brews brewed here would taste uh, as near as possible in the way that they tasted when they were brewed in the So This old mash tun had a capacity of six tons. Oh. Six tons of grist. Oh. That's a lot. That's it. And here we have it. Oh, it's made in copper, right? Yes, it's, in yeah. copper, yes. And when we see the modern ones from on top, you'll see the design is very similar. Yeah. Of course, the materials are modern. And all this equipment was made by engineers in Burton on Trent, the home of IPA. Burton on Trent, iconic in the development of the brewing industry. So that really takes us on to what we put in our beer. Four principal ingredients, probably the same ingredients as when you were making your home brew. Water, of course, malted barley, hops, and, and yeast. We use a small amount of well water, but basically we're using tap water, mains water. Comes into the brewery overnight, fills three tanks. You can see this one, the large one, and the second tank, the third tank is hiding behind the second tank. And those three hold enough water for one day's brewing. Those three, those three tanks are just one. For, for one, one day's, day's brewery. brewery. Yes. Oh, awesome. oh, wow. Well, 90% of your glass of beer is water. Yeah. So, we do need quite a lot. <laughs> that must be some water bill, though. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Which is why people always say, why don't you go back to using the wells? We've got about eight on site. So, they always think about it, but whether we ever will, I don't know. The water table apparently has returned to high enough levels, hmm. but they would have to rebuild the wells because they were okay. brick lined yeah. and they cracked. So it's a possibility. Uh, so, what happens? The water comes into the brewery, it's then heated. And if we're making the light ales, which most of our production is light ale, we change the water because we're mimicking the water of Burton on Trent, we're Burtonizing. So, we're adding gypsum. So we're heating the water, adding gypsum, fertilizing, and then we change the name. And a brewer will tell you he brews with liquor, not water, but liquor. Okay? And then what, uh, any special kind of liquor? Uh... It's, called, it's called liquor. Okay. It's called liquor once it's heated and fertilized. Okay. That's okay. Totally. Okay. If we're making, if we're making London Porter, we don't touch the water at all. The natural water of London makes a dark air, but it's with London Porter. Okay. So uh, that's why also Guinness is dark because uh, Dublin water produces dark beer and Munich water. Is we keep the hops in a cool condition. I just switched the fan off so that we can go in and we can hear ourselves speak. And we use the hops mainly in the form of Yeah, well that's also the modern, most common thing to use. Oh, you can smell it already. <laughs> it smells really pungent. That smells good. Yes, uh, because of course it's absolutely vital 
that we can uh, brew consistent beer throughout the 12 months. Yeah. And by using the, the pellets, we can. Of course, we can keep them in this cool atmosphere. They come vacuum packed, so they keep well, and they're very, very concentrated. All they are is a compressed form of the hot cone. Look how different they are. I'm going to pass you this sack in which you can sniff. Look like I mean, they a, look like rabbit pe food, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rabbit pellets. Oh. And it's really, it's really grapefruity, citrusy. Yes. Oh, do you know what kind of hop that is? Yes, I'm going to tell you the moment you sniffed, you sniffed it, mm. but you're absolutely right, because usually I make people sniff oh. it. What does it taste <laughs> like? Oh, I don't know. It looks like rabbit food. I said, don't look at it. Oh, what does it smell like? Yeah, this a... should be, yes. It's Willamette. Yeah, American, uh, American, American hops, hops for the discovery. And yeah. exactly what it is. Very, citrusy. Yeah, very yes. citrusy. That's yes. like... Almost oh, reminds me a little of ca the Cascade Hub also from America. Yes, That's also yes, very, very sweet. Yes. Oh, almost grapey. Exactly. Yeah, in yes. grape in fruity, yes. yeah. I mean, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yes, and this yes, sack, yes. I mean, this sack has been open for several days because it's just left there for us to sniff. <laughs> so, I mean, if you imagine when you first open the sack, how strong that is. Yeah. But, uh, and of course, American hops are currently the most expensive in the world. Yeah, and they are also very popular currently. Might be done. Anyway, uh, oh, but we must... mustn't overlook the British hops because no, of course. we've grown hops in Kent, area south of. Uh, London for over 500 years since hops were introduced to the UK by, of course, the monks from the Low Countries, yeah. from Belgium and Holland. Uh, I'm sure you can tell me, you should be able to tell me, who introduced beer to the UK? Well, the da, Danes, da, 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 the Vikings. The Vikings, exactly. So thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you have to take that's our heritage. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I mean, no. so really, that's how long the uh, the Brits have been brewing since Viking times, mm. uh, but without the hops. Hops preserve yeah. the beer, give a wonderful flavour, a taste, an aroma. So you know, the beer uh, went up a huge jump. Uh, with the introduction of the hops, but you did bring the beer to us in the first place. <laughs> but of course, you weren't the first brewers of the world. No, uh, no. The ancient I mean, brewers back in Belgium and Mesopotamia, yeah, where you did. Uh, Egypt. Like, Egypt. Yeah, Egypt. the old uh, Belgian style lambics that are spontaneously fermented and all. Yes, yeah. yes. So, when do we add the hops when we're brewing at Fuller's? Well, uh, we add the hops at the beginning of the boil. When we go upstairs to the brew house, you'll see uh, into the coppers. First five or ten minutes we add uh, for preserving the wort. We'll then add towards the end of the boil more hops. Then when we're maturing the beer in the maturation tanks, uh, we add more hops. And if we're making very hoppy beers, which you've already uh, said you enjoy, the ESB and the, uh, uh, the, ESB and the Chiswick Bitter, we'll late hop just as the hops go into the cask. Do, do you do any dry hopping? But that's that's the late hopping. Okay. Dry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just for the very hop. The malt mills are quite antique in their way. I think uh, they're about seventy years old, but very much in running order. The blue one we use just for the organic uh, malt barley, for the organic honeydew, and um, the other one does all the rest. So we're talking about malt or malted barley. That's the amount of malted barley per pint of beer. Okay? Yeah. 45 grams. We use it obviously in the form of grist, a more powdered form. Can I smell it? Yes. Oh, I'm very dry. Okay. Dry Something and bready. Quite old. Yeah. And uh, it's the mills that turn the malted barley into grist. So most of our beers are pear ales, are pear ales. Yeah. so we're using a very small amount of pear ale, where is it? Is it Fast to fill it up. <laughs> so smell, I've got one. So if we're making London mm -hmm. Pride, 90-95% of the malt will be that one and will be topped up with the crystal malt. Yeah. I was just about to ask it if it was crystal malt used. If we're Those making the darker, the darker beers, you got the chocolate. of course the chocolate smell. Very roasted as well. It smells really nice, the chocolate malt. Mm. 
and brown. Very dark. Brown. We use a little bit of wheat malt in the discovery. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Lima. A bit coffee-ish. It, it is. It yeah. is. A little bit. Yes. I think the chocolate's quite coffee-ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smells Even more coffee than the, the brown. Mm. But the, the, the important thing to remember about all these books is that it all starts as the same barley. And all the barley you use in all the beers, Discovery, Spring Sprinter, everything, is UK grain. All UK grain in this Anglia. And the colours and the variety and uh, aroma and taste comes from the way they're treated. So once we've harvested the barley, it's then seeped in water till it starts to shoot. Uh, it's then sent to the maltings, and depending on how long it's, it's uh, treated, it's killed for, and at what temperature, we get this variety in the different colours and smells of the milk. Okay. Can I try and test one of the chocolate malts? Yes, yes. try them. Of course, you could have pleasure. If you want to, you can taste any of them. That's how I spit it out. That is very coffee like. You want to try? Oh, mm. Yes, and try try the. No, that. That's the. Crystal. The crystal. Try the crystal. That's quite sugary. Yeah, very, very sugary. Mm, yes. Mm. Quite, quite sweet as well. Like a cereal almost. That's right. You could eat all of this before. So, that's our horse. Okay. So what happens now on the grill is that we pump up the hot liquor from downstairs, we mix it with our grist, and we call that mash. Yeah. And upstairs in the brew house, we're going to see the mash tons. The mash is heated to 65 degrees, stirred around for about 20 minutes. And during that time, the starch in the grist begins to turn to rudimentary sugars. We then sparge, which is a slower process, push more hot liquor through. And at the end of the process of the mashing, we're going to have a hot, sweet liquid called wort, W-R-T, which is what we're going to brew with and the residual grains that I told you we went up to make the cutting. So let's go up and see that. It's got spent grain in there, if you can see that, guys. This one's got a little bit of grain on there, and you'll see an arm pressing on that. Don't forget, that's part two. That's part two, put your hand on there. Oh yeah, you can see the arm swishing. Oh yeah. So this is the mesh. So that time. explains the yeah. mesh. Nine thousand Yeah. And oh, all okay. this new equipment made of stainless steel, still made by engineers from Burton on Trent. So they okay. made them in the These are the coppers that are no longer made of copper. <laughs> no. <Stainless laughs> They're still called coppers yeah. or well -pools. So this is where we're adding the hops. So we're going to boil for an hour. I don't know if you guys can see that. Ah, it smells sweet. You can really smell the grains now as well, the cereal. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Does this remind you of your... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a very strong feel like you've just eaten. That's right, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, the area. Uh, we're standing behind the house that was Chief Brewer's house. The idea of the window is for the chairman, the directors, whose offices are now in this building, to look into the brew house. The brew house is the heart of the brewery. And for them to look in and see, you know, London Pride is still being brewed, so Fuller's is still active and successful. Uh, we were looking, but the idea is for them to look at the heart of the brewery. Uh, we're obviously now a modern brewery, very mechanical. This whole area, the coppers and the mash tuns, controlled by people in the office there. Does anybody in that minute know? 
and that's where they sit in that little office. They do have to get away from the computer and get, come out of the office and add the hops by hand. Very, opposite, very often on a Monday we brew the honeydew, the honey, runny honey, and the pellety powdered is added at a lower level in the coppers by automation. And the hops have to go in by hand, so they'll come and unscrew this porthole door and throw the hops in. Oh, that's the coppers. These are the coppers, exactly. And this is the one that runs through the coppers. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. You remember this one? Yeah. And the ladder inside. And of course, uh, this goes back to uh, the ladder inside, goes back to the cleaning process. Absolutely imperative between brews uh, to clean the copper. And uh, in the old days, old days up till 1984, when this stopped being used. Uh, the two youngest men of the six-man or eight-man brewing team would climb in the copper, walk down the ladder with a shovel in a bucket, empty out all the grains, back up, back up, back up. When they'd done that, back in again to clean the inside of the copper. Very hard physical job. Yeah. Obviously, with those vessels, they still have to be cleaned, just press yeah. of the button on the computer. No, no, crawl, no crawling no down crawling, into. No crawling. <laughs> Although I did take a tour around a couple of weeks ago and there were people getting in there. Something was obviously gone wrong. And I was talking about this and they said, Susan, there's somebody in the modern car. I said, that's not usual. <laughs> uh, the two guys uh, in the team who did this job, the brewery recognised it was a hard job. So, but they couldn't get any more money because they were the most junior. Uh, but they got extra tokens, and of course the tokens were like a brass coin that fitted into a machine in the canteen and gave them a pint of their oh, okay. beer. So they were paid extra in beer. <laughs> uh, again, that goes back to the days that the draymen, the men who delivered the beer, uh, by custom would always have a pint of beer for them on the bar of the, each pub that they delivered to, and a second pint for the horse. Even though we gave up using horses to help deliver the beer from about 1919, that uh, mythical horse was still there. So we now think about the final prime ingredient of our beer, which is the yeast. Fuller's is an unusual brewery because we have two strains of yeast. For the Fuller's beers, one, and for the Gales beers, another. When we bought the brewery and bought all the pubs from Gales, we also bought the recipes, the brewing books, and the strain of yeast. Yeah. Uh, the scientists look after this aspect. Uh, they have to keep the two uh, yeasts apart. And, um, they also actually have a big role to play in the controlling of the brewing of the beer. They're helping to check each stage. When each batch of beer is finished, every day Monday to Friday, uh, the batches will go to the tasting panel. The tasting panel meets. Uh, four days out of five, it's brewers and scientists, chemists, microbiologists, who will sample each uh, batch of beer uh, and that before it's allowed to, to be sent out to the public. These old puppets uh, here were for sugar. In the past, obviously, nowadays and in the past, the price of barley fluctuates and can have a, an effect on the price of beer. So in the past, when uh, barley was very expensive, uh, the brewer would cut down the amount of barley and add sugar. Low sugar had to be dissolved in these coppers before it was added to the rest. But nowadays we don't use sugar. All the sweetness comes from the barley, except of course in the case of honeydew, when it's a combination of the barley and the honey. Okay, I'll have to so this is a little bit of uh, revision on our beard. Oh, that's a lot of it. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, so that's, that's the really vintage, the then gone dance, uh, the discovery with the foreign grown hops. Golden Pride. Golden Pride, you know. Yeah, yeah Michael Golden Jackson, Pride. one of Michael Jackson's favourite ah, beers. There you are. You know Michael Jackson had his wake in our hop hop cellar? Oh, okay. When he died, yeah. Yeah, the wake, do you understand the wake? The party after the funeral. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Honey, do you? 
course, pride, Fun. porter which you love, the fun yeah. called ESB Chiswick. And this one, you're not alone in liking this, Camera, Campaign for Real yeah. Mail, oh, yeah. they write very regularly to Fuller's and say keep brewing because this is a very unusual and very special beer. It's a very special bitter because it, it's, it, it's quite different from the traditional British bitters that are brewed. And especially also uh, different from the, the more um, mash produced, what you like, uh, John Smith's and all they got at every single pub that's not like really a certified. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's very unusual because it's very hoppy oh. right? uh, and so flavoury. And on a hot day, <laughs> I've done a, a hot tour of running round. <laughs> I really look forward to a, a, a cheesy because it's very refreshing. And of course, it's not very strong. No. no. Which is another, can be another good point. <laughs> 1845. Yeah. A warm, sweet liquid comes into fermentation vessels, each one of these takes the wort from one copper. One of the coppers we saw will fill one of these fermentation vessels. It's actually got a double wall. Uh, in the space between the outer and the inner wall, pipes carrying a coolant. So we're going to cool the wort down to 17 degrees, pitch the yeast in. The yeast, of course, feeds on the sugars, uh, turns the sugars to alcohol. This very slow process Again, the, the chief brewer will say, you can't hurry the yeast. Right, so seven days here, mm -hmm. seven days. Uh, when the yeast has finished its job, it will have grown by four, maybe five times its original size. It will drop to the bottom of the fermentation vessels. How large they are, so look over carefully. Uh, there are conical bottoms, and the, the, spe the yeast will be collected at the bottom of the fermentation vessels. And the two young guys, who we thought about upstairs climbing into the London Copper would ag again have had to clean out the round and the square. But of course their, their worry then, when they were doing this job, was the carbon dioxide. The hisses that we've heard, yeah. carbon dioxide, oh. it's, a na it's a byproduct of the action of the yeast, the fermentation. Oh, the fermentation, and then, it, then it expels there, that's why it, that's, it expands. Yes, but we don't we need carbon dioxide in our beer for the sparkle, yeah, but the course. excess we hear being just blown off into the atmosphere. Okay. But it's sustainable, it's from the barley in yes. the first place. So that's how it was, and now how it is. So this is the cask, or is that the cake? Guys, down there you see the, the, the fullest brewery of number four? Number four. Yeah. This is in number four. And I've and I've all, seen number four. Yeah. And I've already had both reviewed for you guys the number one and two. Hopefully this will get to Denmark like the other one. I should, I should it's put in on uh, the 6th of January 2010. So this is the brewery shop? Yes. The gift shop. Yeah, here is the sign. <laughs> and a big <laughs> London Pride lorry. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it that is. Really you. you should come and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely, I haven't seen this one before. I was about to say they all have personalised numbers. Oh, okay. They're, they're usually. FST for the Smith and Tyler. Oh, yeah. ESP for the But this. It is. You know what? <laughs> no, okay. And that is a camera award as well. You see? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they need to pop that one on the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is, the brewery shop, guys. Okay. Well, so much. Pleasure, pleasure. Thanks a lot to, to Susan for the, the, the tour. It was very lovely. So, thanks a lot. That's a pleasure.
And then, yeah, guys. Keep drinking for this. <laughs> yeah. We're going to show you some of the, some of the posters around here. So, cheers. Okay. Bye. So, guys, we're just shooting some footage here from the, the brewery shop because they have a lot of cool old posters from like old uh, Fuller's pubs. That's not a poster, that's a banner. Yeah, banner, sorry. <laughs> The Builder's Arm, the Hogarth. Oh, the Hogarth, it's probably, it's probably based on that painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Cricketers, the Soviets. And here you got, oh, that's uh, the winter seasonal Jack Frost. Yes. Which is Jack probably Frost. Since it's not, no <laughs> Some ESB glassware. And we oh, can get a beautiful gift basket. Yeah. Yeah. The Royal Oak. And here's some ca uh, cakes. This is metal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is a really nice brewery shop. They got a. I believe they also have some really old vintages of the vintage ale. Bar runners, pump clips, <laughs> towels. That's like all your merchandise here. It's like a really big button for really big people. <laughs> and that's the DVD uh, Susan talked about. Umbrellas, uh, yeah, you, all your merchandise here. Pictures. And here's the glassware. Let's see if we can find the glassware I've got. I've got one of these glasses. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's just, that's uh, the vintage glass. You need the mug. Yeah, but I can't do beer reviews with that. <laughs> you can't see through it. Here's vintage ales. Okay, the vintage ales. Back to. Okay, they have vintage ales all the way back to 2000. The HSD, or yeah, HSD Horn Dean specifically. Like just be past masters. Chaos Prize Old Ale. They've got a lot of different brews. They even do some ciders, I see. They have bullmers and stuff. Yeah, guys, um, but oh, and here is the. The Brewers Reserve, number two, which is the one in Cognac. Guys? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, it's not to you I'm talking. But uh, yeah, guys, this is uh, the fullest brewery tour, Tasting in the Hot Cellar. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was wonderful. This will be uh, also the guys on YouTube, so. Uh, no, but mostly us. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, um, we're probably going to do some more vlogs from London here, so we'll probably see you in another beer review or in another. Vlog. Cheers, guys.